Now, a couple of weeks ago, NASA deliberately crashed a probe the size of a fridge into an asteroid at 23,000 kilometres an hour in an attempt to nudge it off course. It was all part of a practice run to test deflecting technology that might one day save Earth from a killer rock hurtling towards us. Here's the crew's reaction at the moment of impact. Oh my goodness, eight, yeah. seven, oh, six, wow. five, four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh wow. Awaiting visual confirmation. And we have and impact. We <laughs> a giant leap for humanity in the name of planetary defense. Look, this was an incredible feat. And yesterday we learned that the mission was a success. The asteroid was shifted. A little earlier I spoke with astrophysicist Brad Tucker from the Australian National University and asked him how the scientists knew that their plan had worked. And this has kind of been the, the $300 million question, did you shift the asteroid? And one of the reasons this target was chosen is there's two asteroids. There's a bigger one and a smaller one, Dimorphos, and that was the one the probe crashed into. And so what you can do is by measuring how much the orbit of the smaller one changed around the bigger one, you can see the shift. So just as the moon goes around the Earth, in this case, you can measure how much that smaller one moved around the bigger one. Now, the, the orbit of the, this asteroid has been timed really well. It used to be about 11 hours and 50-ish minutes, 53 minutes. Um, but using this probe, now we've been able to detect a shift of 32 minutes in its orbit. So it's kind of like if we were to shave an hour off our day, that's the equivalent of how much time or how much energy we've changed the orbit of the smaller one. Look, it's just a fantastic project and fantastic to see the success, as you say, confirmed by measuring that orbit. I love the name of the mission, DART. It's the uh, double asteroid redirection test and it's been successful. Uh, the, the, the technology, the distances, the, the, the time involved in this, 11 million kilometres travelling at 23,000 kilometres an hour. Get, tell, help us get our head around all that. Yeah, look, and I think this is kind of the impressive thing is, you know, to get this mission first. I really wish they chose Armageddon or Dinosaur Revenge, but, you know, DART also worked as a name. But, you know, you're right, 11 million kilometers away, the asteroid's only 160 meters. So if you think about trying to hit your target 100-ish meters away from 11 million kilometers, and the probe had to fly autonomously as it approached the asteroid. Because it's so far away, there's a little bit of a delay. So you can't fly it in real time. So what they had to do was create this model that says this is what the asteroid may look like because we'd actually never had seen the asteroid up close until the crash. So they said, all right, well, this is what the asteroid may look like. These are its shapes. And then train the computer model to say, all right, adjust for these things, center it, because it needed to center on its target. And that's what we saw with this kind of bobbing up and down, the adjusting of the probe to head into it. So not only did it had to hit its target millions of kilometers away, it had to do it autonomously without knowing what it was going to hit. You know, it's like trying to tell a plane to fly an autopilot, but it doesn't know where it's going and it doesn't know what air is. You know, this is kind of the hard part of what they had to do and they nailed it. It is just brilliant. Aren't we clever? Aren't we just so clever? Now, the serious side to this, of course, this is the first time that uh, humankind has altered the direction of something happening in space. And, and, and the point being that if we see a large asteroid is heading towards our planet, we now know that there's a, a better than even chance we could construct missiles or rockets that can go. We'll have years to do it to intercept that asteroid and hopefully knock it off course so it'll miss us. That's exactly right. You know, it's an insurance plan. You don't want to need it, but you want to know it works. You want to know your emergency drill works in this case. And that's right, is we do not know of an asteroid that is anywhere near of danger. We always find a few new ones, but after they refine their orbit, we know they're not a threat. But that doesn't mean there isn't one out there. We do know at some point an asteroid's going to hit the Earth in the next billions of years. So you don't want it to be in the next few years and not be prepared. And as you said, now that we can find these asteroids as well, really far away, sometimes hundreds of years away, and we know how long it takes to build the probe and we know it works now, you know that that plan can work. And now there's still gonna be a refinement. You know, we'll probably want to test on a bigger asteroid, 
learn a little bit more. In fact, there will be a dedicated probe called Hera built by the European Space Agency that lands in the crater in a few years' time to do kind of forensic analysis on the site to help us understand even more just about what the impact did to better prepare for in the future. Terrific stuff. Fascinating stuff. Thanks for explaining it all to us, Brad. No worries. How about that, eh? We can all sleep easy now. Chris Bowen is kidding himself, thinking he's saving the planet. NASA have got the job under control.